Learn to be super successful. Subscribe to my channel, me head. So far, the uh, people that I've talked to in the one-on-ones, every single person that has attempted to start the QLA process has done it wrong. The boards that you built are wrong. Or as I told one of you dipshits yesterday, they're also ran. And you had, you ha- well, I'm going to ask you, do you know what an also ran is? Gold, there's a gold medal, uh, um, a silver medal, and a bronze medal, right? And then everybody else is an also ran. They got fuck all. You understand? You, you, other than uh, a type of shit over there would say, well, I came in fourth at the Olympics. I, made, I was an Olympian. That's, he says, well, at least I got a deal done. Also ran. Okay, I'm working on it. Nobody remembers a fourth place medal at the Olympics. So the guys that had built boards, uh, one of the guys even was getting sued, supposedly, by his chairman. It, it was just a comedy of errors. Comedy of errors. Does everybody understand what a comedy of errors is? I mean, it is fuck up after fuck up after fuck up. Chip on your dick, you know, you know, fall back and shit, fuck up, fall back and shit, fuck up, piss down your leg, fuck up. So the kids that, when I say that you can do this and not come here, it's true. We have guys that have created hundreds of millions. To the best of my knowledge, we have no billionaire that has used QLA that hasn't come here. To the best of my knowledge. If there is one of you meatheads, please contact me so I can stop saying that. But I've been saying this for many, many, many years. So if I was wrong, believe me, one of you cunts would have contacted me by now. So I'm, I'm, I'm just about dead positive that we have no billionaires have been created to QLA, the model, the system, in the 28 years that hasn't, I haven't touched like motherfucking God with my hands. Metaphorically speaking, okay. A few of the girls back in my youth, I would have liked to touch with my hands, but I didn't. Um, so in that regard, but we've created a lot, of, a lot of money, a lot of, you know, Ostensibly, a lot of money, 10, 20, 50, 200 million, stuff like that. And even the people that come to the seminar, like you, <clears throat> are going to fuck it up. Why? Self-sabotage. Correct. Because you can't help yourself. You can't help yourself. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. In your mind, you want to become wealthy. Arguably, generational wealth. Generational wealth is money that normally takes 20 to 25 years. Um, in three to seven years, and I went through all that. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, when you make generational wealth, I said something to the effect yesterday, when you have about 200 million bucks in the bank after taxes and all the other shit you've done, your life really changes quite a bit. Um, and I think I, I mentioned that, um, like when Joe Rogan got had fuck you money the first time a few years ago. But the spirit being willing, when the flesh is weak, the flesh meaning you sin by not following the steps. So I'm trying to make it a, in a, a religious metaphor the best I can. Not, uh, even though we give a lot of money to religion, I'm not that religious. So, <clears throat> but I'm covering my bases just in case there's a big man up there. Just like all the guys <clears throat> try to pave their way, if there is a heaven or a soup or whatever, with money. Oh, MI5? Can you give me a double espresso, please? Yeah. Um, I started to read the homework before I came over here, and then I went into the bathroom and wanted to throw up. <laughs> the, um, I must have caught two or three of you that, that were the, uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is really weak. When you're com- commenting about uh, Steve, you've heard from just about every seminar guru that alive, success leaves clues. This is not new, right? Success leaves clues. If you wanted to be a, uh, a world-class pitcher back in the day, uh, you went, uh, when Babe Ruth was a world-class pitcher, you went to him. Uh, when you, uh, in the Dodger era, you went to Drysdale or Koufax. And, uh, you know, if you want to be a world-class hitter, you went to him, right? Ted Williams, who's the last professional baseball player in America to finish with over 400 batting average for a season. He batted 406, I think. Um, you went to him. And Ted Williams, and he was a coach for a while. I think he was with the Red Sox, I think. Anyway, he said that he used to be able to see the ball, the 
the stitching on the ball, even when they're pitching fastballs, he could see the stitching on the ball as it came. He knew if it was going to be a slider, a curve ball, that. Well, he had extraordinary eyesight. Now they go back, and so they're trying to discount the poor bastard. He's been dead 40, 50 years. Oh, fuck, he was a fucking freak. He had special eyesight. Well, I, I'd rather be lucky than smart, you know, and since I had no athletic prowess whatsoever, you know, God bless him that he had, uh, you know, uh, great eyesight. But success leaves clues, and we're going to talk about Steve, but Steve was a jerk at best, an asshole at worst. And then you. And we're going to talk about six or seven other icons through the week. And then we got you. We used to have this test um, where you pick out the traits. Uh, uh, let's say Steve's got 10 traits. I'm not saying good traits. I'm just saying traits. And then how many of those do you have? And I used to, it used to be hilarious. I used to get a fucking my jollies off. I uh, almost shit myself because some of the things that you thought you could relate to Steve or Andrew Carnegie or Henry Ford or fucking delusional. You have none of their traits. Zero. You've never met anybody other than me that's got any of their traits. And that's including all the gurus. I eat the other gurus for breakfast. Success leaves clues. And so I was thinking this morning when I'm brushing my teeth, um, why, if almost everybody knows success leaves clues? They saw Jobs last night, and I looked at some of the emails. How is it then, and he was not a nice guy, under any standards, no, any benchmarks, how is it that you can't understand that you have to adapt to at least some of those standards to, to make any fucking serious money? Why is it? You can't. Or as they say in this part of the world, you can't. Why? Why do you pay me money when you know how I am? It's not a secret, is it? Although I'm, I believe, 10 times better in person than on tape. But why? When there's no chance in this world that this little bitch is ever going to have any of my traits whatsoever. Not in her fucking lifetime if she lives to be a goddamn thousand. Some would say hope springs eternal. Everybody know what that means? You know, if you wish and you hope enough, maybe it'll happen. My mother was a great prayer. Devout Catholic. And I said, prayer doesn't get it done, Mom. If prayer got it done, why are there uh, 3.95 or about uh, 4 billion people that are dirt fucking poor in the world that all pray, that are devout something? Devout Muslim, devout Catholic, de why, right? If prayer got the motherfucker done, who are the ones that pray? I said it yesterday, mostly poor people. Occasionally you get some rich, like the Kennedys, you know, good Catholic, blah, 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 okay. Because remember I talked about the genes, it's impossible. All the scientists say it's not possible that all that DNA chain could have been done serendipity by accident. Alluding to, you know, some, somebody somewhere, some higher power did it. But it's faith, remember? I said religion other than the guy, supposedly the, the women that saw uh, the, you know, uh, the resurrection of Jesus behind. Uh, but I mean, for the most part, 99.9999% of people that are religious do it on faith. Some people have a vision, you know, uh, like uh, Fatima a hundred years ago in um, Portugal when they saw the Virgin Mary. Uh, okay. But so 99.9999, okay, on faith. And so far, you've heard <clears throat> the guys, uh, Margot didn't uh, really say it that way, they accept what um, I say on faith, and they follow the steps. And you've heard at least half of them so far say, and it worked out just like Mr. Pena said. But that still doesn't say, because most of you still don't believe, 
I, uh, I can tell by standing up here. I mean, I've been doing this a long fucking time, and I'm very good at it. I can smell death, and I smell it in this fucking room. When I walk into a business that I buy, I, walking through, you know how they have now, uh, you're sitting in cubicles now, kind of, you know, there's no, hardly anybody has desks, I mean offices. I can go by the cubicles and I can tell who to fire just by taking a deep breath when I pass their computer. And if you shut your computer off, you're fired right on the spot. Why would you shut your computer off when the new chairman walked by your cubicle. There's no good reason. None. Zero. And why would I be so capricious and say, you're fired? Because I've been doing this a million years, and I've passed a million cubicles. And I know never once, when I followed up to see what the last page was on the computer, was there anything about business. And maybe I've been wrong one time in 10,000. So what? I can smell death, and I can smell, I smell less death this morning than I did yesterday morning. Because you were a little excited uh, the, uh, about Andreas. And although you've already, four or five of you have already figured out Andreas isn't for real. How you can come up with that fucking uh, uh, rationale? It's because. You're missing more than just the DNA. You're missing, you know, some brain cells. None of you want to be like Steve Jobs. A lot of the, the flavor of the day is Elon Musk right now. If you knew what I knew about Elon, you wouldn't want to be him either. You've always got a reason. Even though Elon, every third word is fuck. Even though he's hard on his employees. Jeff is hard on his employees. Jack Ma was hard on his employees until he pissed off the Chinese government. Now he's not the head of whatever the fuck it was. Ali Fucker. You don't want to make that much of a sacrifice to be an asshole. Now see, I don't consider it a sacrifice. You're not willing to take, Bruce Whipple uses the saying, go the extra mile. It's a cheap cliche, but you're not willing to go the extra mile. Now, we have not one six pack or 5% body fat on the Hall of Fame. For those of you that have spent time getting six packs, you wasted your fucking time. You procrastinated. Not one. I Probably the best we got is 20% uh, body fat. And the girl is 40% body fat. And I think the best I ever was was 12% body fat. But why do you spend your time doing that? You don't consider procrastination, do you? Because it's easier. Almost anybody in this room, I can get down to 5% body fat. Eight pack, not six pack, eight pack in four months. It's not that hard. It's certainly a lot easier than getting up on that fucking wall. Because the things that you consider distasteful, you're not willing to do. Like I said, there's a line I cross, I'm not going to kill anybody. But that's the only thing. And I said, personally kill anybody. I didn't say I wasn't going to have anybody made dead. That's a different thing. I'm plenty capable of that, and I've been accused of that umpteen times in my 50-year career. But why is it that you're not willing for your teenage other than one? How many teenagers? We got one? Yeah, other than one teenager in the room. So you're past the teenage stage, right? That's gone by. You can't ever, you know, get that back. A system that has created multi-million teenagers to the largest deal in recorded history, how much you're willing to sacrifice? And talk's cheap. And I told you, you have disdain for the pig fucker. 
the Northern Ireland pig fucker. So why are you here, really? I'm going to give you the same seminar the rest of the week with a few changes as I see the Homer come in and I uh, measure it against the questions and I measure the questions that you're asking me, which proves to me that you didn't do any home, hardly any homework that I told you to do before you got here against what I know is successful and what I know I can take out and leave in and blah, blah, blah. Okay. That I'm going to do anyway, even if you're all fucking mush heads. But if you're not willing to do what's really fucking necessary, so far the, the most phone calls you've heard anybody say they made cold calls, I think was 40 a day. That's nothing. When my son, when I told my son when he got out of grad school, out of undergrad, I said, be the first to work, the last to leave, and make 300 cold calls a day, and you'll lead the nation or no, no matter where the fuck you work. Lead the nation. When our daughter got out of undergraduate school, same thing. First to work, last to leave, make 300 cold calls, and you'll lead the nation. Both of them led the nation. Well, how do you know 300 cold calls? Because that's going to be 100, 290 more uh, cold calls than anybody else is going to make in the country, in the United States of America. Because invariably, when you go into sales programs and big companies, sales training, and, that's, and you're selling some kind of shit. I used to make 500 calls a day. We have people, not on the Hall of Fame, but we have people that have made many millions that haven't made 500 calls in their entire fucking career. You don't like hearing this. You're only 2,000 cold calls away. Nobody likes that. And several years ago, we had the leading Mercedes salesman uh, in a seminar, and then a couple mo uh, months later, we had the leading BMW salesman in the UK. Both of them said the same exact thing. I've never heard, is it really come down to cold calls, asked in so many different ways in my entire 20-year sales career, 15-year sales career. Because your parents didn't send you to school to the extent that you went to school to be a fucking salesman. This young man was talking about his 18-year-old son or... Uh, should he go off to university? And I said, no. Um, but when I went off to school, uh, salesman? A salesman is right below a, a garbage collector or a bin collector in this country. They collect the bins. Your family didn't come across, well, my family didn't come across the Rio Grande as illegal aliens to produce a fucking salesman. So a combination of you don't want to be a salesman, and that's all I am. And I've refined my skills to up where I sell governments. And you don't want to pick up the phone. And now they've got headsets and all kind of automatic dial, fuck, all kind of shit, right? I never use any of that. But if you don't cross the line vis-a-vis -vis that, you're a, sales, you're a dirtbag fucking cunt salesman and you're nothing more. If you can't cross that line, you're going to be a poor cocksucker. Or you're not going to get any richer than you are, which there's only a couple of you got any money at all. Not real money, but I mean, got a, some, some money. And you, you should pray to whoever, if you pray to anybody, that you turn into the next Steve Johns, a ruthless son of a bitch that would tear the eyes out of a blind man just because it was fun. Otherwise, you're going to fail. I can't make it any clearer. I can't make it any clearer. And when I tell people, if you're coming to the seminar, and you've got all kinds of reasons why you built your board and all this bullshit. I didn't want to waste time during Corona. It's all shit. Most of you have been engaged in self... Self-sabotage. All your fucking lives. You don't know any better. Why do women that get abused, beaten up, go from one guy that beats them up to the next guy that beats them up to the next guy that beats them up? Conditioning, and it's in their DNA because their mom got beat up. 
Why is it so difficult to break the circle of poverty? Conditioning. Why do rich people want their kids to go to school with rich people? Because rich just rubs off. If you can't make the hurdle cognitively, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer. Okay, comments about Steve. Now, first, the comments about 26 years without a day off. The Chinese bitch. She's willing to sacrifice her family, regardless of how much pain she's having. We don't have too many of those in this room. 26 years. She's also super rich. I wouldn't be giving you that story if she was fucking mopping floors. What else about the, the Chinese lady? Yes. Uh, she has some trauma because her husband died. And uh, she uses that as fuel. Instead of using that, that fuel, instead of using the fuel that I want to at least get a deal done. Do you see the differences in those metaphors? What about the, um, the Irish guy that I thought he, he should have been the guy, the pig fucker? And all his reports said what? Nothing. <laughs> I was surprised he was able to fill up that much space saying nothing. But he's the guy, everybody in this room would have picked him. I mean, he was a suave, debonair, raconteur, renaissance man. Nothing. Never underestimate how wrong he can be. Okay, now Steve, who's certainly not nothing. What about Mr. Jobs, other than you don't have any of his characteristics, bad or good? Yes, sir, in the back. He really didn't give a shit what people thought because he had a clear Really? Vision. What a yeah. fucking surprise. He had a clear vision of everything that uh, he believed in his mind and nobody was going to stop him. Interestingly enough, when we used to do with the traits and characteristics, I never cared what anybody thought. But I, I didn't have a clear vision until I was in my late 20s. I just wanted to drink and fuck as much as I possibly could. I wanted to die fucking when I was 19. I was in search for the multiple orgasm that men can't have. And that's the God's truth. That's all I wanted to do. And guess what? That's all I did. Me and the Rolling Stones. 92 million people we fucked. If you only have one thing on your mind, one thing, you get it done. And in that, in that period of my life, that's all I had in my mind. If you get one thing on your mind, and then for 25 years, it was a trillion dollars produced to you fucking me, did. But when I did the 500 billion one, I, I already was at a, a little over two. I said, well, now I'm, you know, I'm home free. And the reason why we stayed at 50 billion for a long time, the 50 billion dollar man, because I could make one phone call, have one guy sign an affidavit that created 56 billion by himself. People, because everybody talks bullshit. I had one guy. 56 billion. And so I went from 56 billion to trillion. Because one of you meatheads, you know, is going to say, prove it. Which we can easily prove it. What else about Steve? Yes, sir. Um, the, the first couple of computers that he made weren't a success. But <laughs> um, stuck with it and, you know, he's remembered for the ones that did work, not his failure. Well, a lot of the shit that he made didn't work. Did he stop selling them? No. Now, I'm not promoting deceit. I'm not promoting that. Again, they say that I could have been the first trillionaire on the planet, but I'm not tough enough. I'm not willing to lie enough, steal enough, kill enough. That differentiates me. But I was good enough to create to you by some act of Allah 
a trillion dollars. I've told you before, I thought it was going to take me, Sally, I thought it was going to take me, I started coaching when I was 48. Well, 55, I said, that's it. I should be able to do it by the time I'm 55. And when I turned 50, I had a big party at Glom's Castle, which is the Queen's Castle up the road. And I said, some of my guys that I knew that he, they thought I was, I was going to retire then because I had come to my daughter. I said, no, it's a lot fucking tougher. Getting other people to do shit, I mean, outside the comfort zone is almost impossible. That was an understatement. <laughs> what else about Steve? He didn't understand computers. Um, he didn't understand anything, but uh, his name is on the patent. So, uh, when I tell you, you don't have to know anything about healthcare, and I didn't know anything about the oil and gas business. And the, um, next year, I'm going to Panama, and I'm going to perform brain surgery. For real. I can get a temporary license. We've got three volunteers. We're paying them. If they die, money goes to their families. I am positive by the third brain surgery, it'll be successful. No medical school, no fucking nothing, no training, no nothing. Just looking at YouTubes. But you can't even watch my YouTube. You still fucking up, don't you? I'm going down with a uh, medical partner of mine who's a vascular surgeon. He's not going to get suited up. Well, you went too far with that the scalpel, then uh, you got to uh, clamp it off. Uh, I'm, I can't wait. I mean, almost as excited as when I was going to do the exorcism, which my fucking priest died on me, Father Mateo. This, that's what I do to get out of my comfort zone. What the fuck do you types of shit do? And I'm still trying to get out of my comfort zone. And you do dick, nothing, fuck all. What else about Steve? Yes, sir. He got kicked out of the company he founded. And then came well, I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're going to get kicked out. There's not one of you in this room that will survive a year past if you get to an IPO. Not one in the room. Not one of you. Man, woman, or beast. Unless you make some massive changes between now and that time frame. You won't. You won't make it. Some of you aren't going to get, it's not funny, but it's not, to me it's funny. Some of you won't get past uh, the first acquisition before you get thrown out. Now, why do I laugh when I say that? Not just because it's true. Because even though I tell you, you're still going to do the things, the mistakes, to fuck up to get thrown out. That's what's funny. And why? Self-sabotage. Thank you. What else about Steve? And the, the, oh, yes, sir. Go ahead. He uh, had paternal instincts for Apple and only cared about his kid when she gave him marketing. When he found out she was smart, because he said, "Well, you mean there's there's uh, the DNA test is only ninety nine point eight percent, whatever it was, uh, and so there's this, you know there could be uh, forty five thousand people on the planet that could have been your father. Well, I forget what the number is." And, and his daughter wrote a book. Um, I don't recommend you read it, but I mean, the bottom line is if you think he was an asshole based on what you heard and read, he was a hundred times more of an asshole. Um, the, my mother and I lived on relief. Is that when you get money from the government, what's it called? Relief? Yeah. Welfare, yeah. Welfare. And uh, she's got a whole story. They had a, not a 60 minutes, but something like a 60 minutes. Um, okay, YouTube.